are extremely excited to have an interview with the coach and some of the excellent players of the Belgian Open team. So we're going to do a round of introductions starting on my right. So uh, hi, I'm Benjamin Junkers. I'm playing with uh, Mooncatchers and I'm playing national team since 2014. Hi, uh, my name is Pierre Alain. Um, I'm the coach of Mooncatchers. I've been playing for 20 years now, and it's my first year coaching the Belgian men's national team. Hi, I'm Tilburg de Krane, um, and I've been playing in, uh, in Gentle, and this is my first year in the national uh, open team, uh, but I've been playing in new teams since uh, 2017. Hi, my name is Lander de Krane. I'm his older brother. I play for Gentle as well, and this is my first team in the Open National team. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Pieter Jan de Mullenare. I'm uh, playing for uh, 20 years now, um, and it's the ninth time I'm re representing Belgium uh, for the national team. Hello, I'm Daan de Marais. Um, it's my first time for the Open team, but I've been playing for um, several years for the youth team, and I've been playing for Jet Set and Mooncatchers. Uh, I'm Ref Jankers. Uh, I play for Mooncatchers since uh, 2010, so 13 years. And uh, it's also like my, actually my first time playing uh, the Open team. Uh, I haven't been a chance to play uh, yet before because of injuries, and uh, no, I'm not even playing because I'm uh, injured too. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's going to be fun. <laughs> 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 I time. It's all right, you're captaining, so you can just get that eighth person D. That's what it's all about, right? Wire management. So, Pierre Alain, we will start with you. So, in terms of obviously from the coaching perspective, um, and you, I believe, have coached all of your teams to finals in the past year so far, so a good record. Um, what do you think is the unique strength of Belgian Ultimate in particular? Um, I think. The, the strength that we have both within Moons or other clubs in the national team uh, is the youth uh, because all of these guys have been playing together for uh, many, many years since they basically started uh, Ultimate. Uh, and I think all the coaches who coached um, youth teams at the national team level uh, did an excellent job and we see the results now, basically. What do you think is the key to the rise of the Mooncatchers last year? Because you were seeded 25th to start the tournament and you finished in the fourth position. So what was the biggest sort of strength for you that allowed that rise? Um, I think there were several. Um, first, there was a, a huge commitment from um, all the guys um, throughout the year to really be there at practice, um, to do the physical work as well at the gym. Um, throughout the year, we had a a physical trainer uh, with, a, with a very strong program. Uh, everybody was there like uh, two times or three times per week uh, to practice together. So I think uh, that helped a lot. Uh, we had a, a very good preparation there. Uh, so strong commitment from the entire team. Um, obviously, we also had a few uh, international uh, imports uh, with the, 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 our Latvian friends, uh, a couple of Americans, and then Gael Hanslan, who stepped up uh, at the, really at the like, last minute to replace an injured player. Um, and I think the fact that we had all these experienced players also reinforcing the team um, allowed us to yeah, perform at our best. But um, the, the great thing that we had during the tournament is that, especially our offense, for example, was really like moon catchers 100% uh, from start to finish almost. We had a couple of crossovers, but we really managed to, while having a few uh, imports, keep uh, a very strong Mooncatcher score. And I think that was like uh, super important because all of these players have also been playing since their junior years. And so basically the chemistry that we have on the pitch, uh, I think really made a difference. Thank you. So with the successes that you've already got sort of in the bank, as we say, what is next for Mooncatchers and for Belgian Ultimate generally? <clears throat> um, so I usually, uh, ask the guys to not think about, um, like, don't think about the prize or don't think about the ring, um, because it's really like one tournament at a time, one game at a time. Um, so obviously, we want to reach uh, as far as possible. Uh, we always aim uh, for the win, 
so yeah, I mean, in, in our dream, uh, it's really about winning whatever tournament that we can. Um, however, our mind is really focused on uh, the task at hand rather than, okay, in a week's time, uh, should we play the final and against who and all these kind of things. As long as they haven't happened, uh, there's no point in focusing on those and really focusing on uh, yeah, what's next, basically. And my last question for you, what do you think is the most important thing to make this success sustainable for Belgium? Um, I think we need to keep on working uh, with our uh, juniors, like every club in Belgium. I think it's super important that we uh, keep on investing uh, in those, uh, invest a lot also uh, in the in the coaching, in training our coaches as well, um, because when you see other countries like the USA who are super dominant um, with their players, there's also like they have coaching staff who are really, really experienced, uh, who are used to play at the, the highest level. And so I think um, these areas like investing coaching in, in, in training or coaches, um, keep working with the youth a lot and investing massively on those. I think these are the two main aspects to really keep um, the level high uh, and also in future years remain really competitive uh, as we are now because now we see the results and I think it's just to prove that we need to, to keep on working like that. Awesome, well thank you so much for answers to the questions. So, we'll move on to our pairing, first set of brothers that we have on both sides of me, a, a thorn between two roses as we would say in the UK. So. Obviously, you both started, in fact, I think every single player here in front of us started in the youth programs. But talk to us a little bit about what it was like in the early days of the Moon Catchers, because you both are true moon from the start. So who'd like to go first? <laughs> <laughs> so we've been playing uh, Frisbee for um, maybe 12, 13, 30 years. But uh, the fact is that our father created uh, a club in uh, city of Brussels, so we've been in the frisbee program since we child. So it's kind of our, in our DNA. Then we stop frisbee and we try other sports, and then we didn't find what we we, we really look for. And then we came back to frisbee, and then the process since 2011 starts. And uh, it starts with uh, Olivier Cassard. So big uh, thanks to him. So without him, we will not be there. So he's the guy, and then. Uh, Frisbee was in our DNA, so we start and we keep pushing, and 13 years later, we're there. <laughs> I'll move on to our next question then, Raf, for, for you. So in terms of then last year, to cast our eyes back to the World Ultimate Club Championships, from the playing perspective, because we've heard from your coach, what was it like kind of within the team, the kind of the feelings and the emotions as you were kind of getting through those games and taking on some very big opponents? So yeah, um, world was crazy for, for Benji and I because it was the first time that we were like leading the moon catchers uh, as, a, as a captains, like we work with PA. And uh, also we had to take the responsibility of uh, being a captain. And sometimes uh, it's really hard. I mean, you on the, you on, you on the field, a lot, lot of people, a lot of your teammates is uh, looking up to you. And uh, sometimes you have to like calm down and uh, show the good uh, mentality and uh, example to the team. And sometimes it's hard to, to contain uh, ourselves because we're human uh, and we, when we have when we're good players, we get sometimes like frustrated too. And we have to, to, to keep that frustration uh, away for, for, for the good sake of the team. Uh, and uh, that's, that's pretty much the the biggest thing we, we had to deal with uh, this entire tournament because uh, uh, it was like uh, really hard and uh, we, we, we knew that we had to carry uh, on our shoulder uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of stress from the others uh, to help them uh, feel sa safer also. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so certainly so. It's a very important quality for a captain. Mm -hmm. So in terms of then the kind of the imports that you guys had for Moon Catchers last season. What do you think was the key? Because it's so frequently we see Moon take on talent from other clubs, you know, maybe one or two players. So what do you think about the team it really allows them to kind of mesh so quickly and find their roles within the system? Now, I would say first that uh, we, we took some pickups uh, that look the same as, as us. So that, that for us, the, we, we can say that uh, the Latvian guys are like the Mooncatchers, 
born but in, a, in the wrong country, I would say, <laughs> because, because because the the, the connection is like really perfect uh, uh, all together, and uh, we we knew that sooner or later we're gonna have to play uh, uh, with each other, so that was the ma one main thing about uh, the, the the those pickups. Uh, I don't know if you have something else to say. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, nothing really to add. Just they easily fit with our uh, game plan and game and how we how we play frisbee. Like a bit, a bit, a bit spicy and a bit. Uh, so yeah, it fits well. Yeah. Also, talking about similarity of play styles, you obviously both have a lot of similarities and the, the way you like to kind of you know your big throws and your, your catches. But what makes you different, both on the pitch and off the pitch? So first, for on the pitch, I think the fact that we play on different positions really help our chemistry to be at high at the highest possible uh, level. So yeah, I think uh, yeah the fact that we play different position and uh, that we bother, so we we know before throwing that okay this is gonna go there. So so defender is uh, already a few seconds late. <laughs> and off the pitch. And off the pitch, I left uh, that for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, off the pitch, we we quite like also like the same. I would say, even if we have like uh, the difference uh, differences. Uh, but I mean, wh what else to say that uh, Benji is like really also like motivating me uh, aside on on the the gym part because he is really like uh, taking care of it. So. I was like, yeah, and if, if my little brother is like uh, g fully going uh, to, to the gym and then uh, I have to follow up and uh, try to try to uh, show the good example too. So it's shout out to him for, for doing that. <laughs> and um, otherwise, yeah, we, sti we still live uh, with our parents. Uh, so that make us like really, really, really close to each other. So we have like uh, lots of uh, friends uh, to, to like the same friends, same same group friends, so uh, so yeah, we hang out uh, a lot to, to each other. So uh, we can say that we're best friends, and uh, that's the best thing uh, that we can happen uh, as brothers. So yeah, you see that a lot in kind of you know club teams where they all have the same frisbee house. Uh, but you guys have been getting on that track way ahead of the game. So that's sweet. <laughs> All right then, so our next set of brothers, the Kranas, and of course I have to humbly apologize for not knowing which of you, Did you, you both just look so young to me, so. <laughs> it's the bit. All right, so a similar question to what we asked the Yonkers. Um, what was it like in your home club growing up over in Ghent? Um, so um, we started playing with Gentle because our uncle actually founded the club and our mom played, so it, we started playing at like family trips and stuff uh, way in the beginning of our lives, so that's when the connection started. Um, Gentle also really pushes their youth. Um, when we started it was less, but now it's like the biggest club in, in Belgium, youth-wise. Um, yeah, so I think that's nice. Yeah, I think growing up, um was pretty easy to to train and to throw all the time because at like family gatherings um, at home uh, everywhere we went uh, we just had a disc with us um, and our mom taught us like the the basic throws um, and yeah once we started throwing um, I think we threw almost on a daily basis I think that's what uh, yeah started the connection already and what helped our technique of the throws also so think that's it. Uh, can I add something? <laughs> I think the reason he's so good at skying is because I was always a little bigger than him because <laughs> I'm a year and a half older so he had to really try his best while I could sh just st stand still <laughs> and wait for the disc. <laughs> so that's why he skies higher than me now. Um, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to speak a, a little bit about watching other people have success. Um, so last season, obviously, it wasn't the same story for Gentle. You, you know, obviously, came down in the rankings versus your seeding, but still way up there on the stats board, Mr. Stats Leader from World Championships last year. Um, but what's it like for kind of the other teams in the Belgian community? And what was it like for you watching Mooncatchers, you know, have that success? Because it was almost felt like the rest of the world was behind them. 
Um, I think a big part of uh, yeah, playing in the same tournament as Moon, where Moon had such a success, was uh, proudness. Really proud to be, yeah, proud to be Belgium, um, and like always supporting them. Uh, we had like a game at the same time as them, and our game finished a bit for a bit a bit earlier, <laughs> um, and we all ran to their field to like support them in the last uh, couple of points. So I think we're just really proud to. Yeah, to represent the same nation and it's really fun that we can do it uh, on the international stage as well um, but of course there is a bit of pettiness in that as well um, yeah, a bit of jealousness that they were so high and we were a bit lower but we're still proud of the team so I think uh, it was a great tournament I think we really beat expectations as well with our team uh, like the results don't really show, but we were really proud as well to be 17th and the way we played, like the biggest teams in the world. Um, and yeah, Mooncatchers just put on an amazing fucking performance. Can I can I curse? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so an amazing fucking performance. Um, yeah, and we were just on the sideline and enjoying the the vibes you you brought. Uh, the game he's talking about was the quarterfinal, I think, against Sokai. Um, and I think you were one point down uh, at the end, and then we came to cheer you on. We were like shouting, uh, and then you. Yes, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could be, could be, could be. So yeah, we even though we play different teams, we're still one Belgian family, I would say. So uh, yeah. Oh, I need to know the actual. So then. So obviously, um, you two are real can kind of compare and contrast in the way that you prepare for kind of yourselves for these big tournaments. But what is it that inspires each of you to keep playing Ultimate after such a long time? Um, yeah, so what most people don't know is that I actually also go to the gym. Not, s <laughs> not seven days a week, though, but uh, <laughs> like once or sometimes twice if I'm really feeling it. Um, yeah, how we pre prepare for tournaments is different because it, it's like his lifestyle, his life uh, revolves around it. His, his commitment, his discipline is crazy. Uh, I respect it so much. So I try to learn from it as well. Um, but I also have other things going around in my life. So I have to like find the balance. And I think him getting mad at me for not being at my highest level is really uh, something that helps me to be at my highest level. Um. Yeah, I think we prepare really different. Um, I like to keep it like really strict, so like food-wise, workout-wise. Um, I like to prepare like at every percent matters. Uh, I also train with a personal trainer. Um, he's also here. He's a opponent right now, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think for me it's really important to have like a hundred percent focus, and I think maybe. He can use a bit of um, other things in his life as well, which keeps him at the highest level as well. So I think uh, we prepare different, but the outcome is great. So, yeah. Well, we can all respect somebody who has the full on commitment, but also an outside of life with, with Frisbee. You know, sometimes it can, the balance is really important. So, the final question. So last week when you were playing the 24th division at Worlds, sometimes we saw you on different lines, sometimes we saw you on the same line. Which do you prefer? Um, I think uh, if we're on the same line, we connect really well. Uh, of course, if you're brothers like the, the Yonkers brothers, we have like a connection that I think is really hard to create. Um, you just, yeah make eye contact and you know where it's gonna go with us it's mostly him throwing the hook and me running deep but i think it can always work out um so to answer your question i think i would prefer to play in a line with him um just connection wise um yeah i like playing with him uh, like he said but we're our playing styles really differ because he's good at finding the zone, finding the spots, getting away from his defender. Uh, and I think I'm quite good at like defending, uh, seeing the game develop and try to be at the spot to not make him uh, score. Uh, I like defending more because it's like a 
satisfaction that you don't have with the with the offensive lines. I think that's the only reason why we don't play on the same line. Otherwise, we would. I think it's a pity to not use that connection. I would say in a team like this. All right, and moving on to our final pairing, PJ and Dan. So. Because you're not brothers, I have more specific questions for you as individuals. Um, we'll start with you, Dan, yeah. since this is a hecking year you're having. Is there anything about this season for you, either mentally or personally, in, in just in life, that's been different? Because you've been playing all the things and doing all of the brilliance on the field. Um, I think it's just mentally-wise, really. Um, I started... I First... I didn't have that much stress for school this year and last year, so that helped a lot. Um, but also mentally wise on the game, um, I started going to the gym more. Um, I started going to Moon last year, uh, which yeah hyped me up so much. Um, those guys helped me motivating. Um, so yeah, um, I think it's that and just the the hunger for the game uh, kept growing each day. Um, I wanted to go to tournaments just to win not to be second or, or third. Um, I just wanted to crush everybody, uh, to break ankles and stuff. So that's what I wanted to do. And I, I think, yeah, we need to, well, we, I think it's not over yet with uh, Mooncatchers, with Belgium. Um, there's a big future. So I think, yeah, mentally wise, uh, it's a big difference for me. So, PJ, on your side of things, so we did actually have a little bit of love thrown at you from across this other sofa mm -hmm. in a player survey. Toby said that he was you were his sporting hero. Um, so what do you think, in terms of inspiring the next generation of Belgian Ultimate players, is the most important thing? So um, I think the most important thing is uh, to show them uh, always give your 100% on the pitch, always go for it. Um, personally, but also for the team, uh, try to be the best teammate. Try to be the the guy who who gives it all. And after each point, you can say like, I did my best, and I have no regrets. Um, that was all also the way I played, um, and uh, I always showed or tried to give my hundred percent and uh, and achieve uh, yeah big things with it. Uh, I think that's the most important thing uh, to to teach the youth. Yeah, and definitely something I think you've achieved over the course yeah. of your career. So in terms of thinking way back when, because you have 21 years and I think 11 or 12 years respectively of your playing careers, if you go all the way back to the juniors, what was it that kind of got you playing and kept you playing in the first place with your home clubs? Um, so yeah, Jetset is my home club. Uh, shout out to them. Um, uh, <laughs> No, um, I think, yeah, at first it was just friendship. I uh, had a couple of friends from the scouts, we call in uh, Belgium, um, that we start throwing at the, the camps and uh, the stuff and around. Um, yeah, and then it was just, I saw the tournaments, the weekends, and they were so much fun. The, B the Belgium championships, it was an all weekend. You stay at the camping, uh, you, you did a little party. Um, so yeah, that was just so fascinating to see. And then I started comparing football, uh, soccer, with um, with Frisbee. And I was like, oh no, okay, uh, what I'm going to choose. Um, and yeah, Frisbee was just just so, this was just something special that, that was not in every sport. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's go 100% for it. Um, so yeah, after friendship, it was just the, the specialty of Frisbee that helps me going up and going up and yeah the, the just the people are so amazing uh, uh yeah so yeah that was really the the big thing uh, that i kept growing and uh, starting to play frisbee so um i'm kind of in the same situation as the younger brothers uh, i have also a father who founded uh, a club in bruges and also uh, frisbee a little bit in general uh, in belgium so i started playing as a kid but uh, in my days, it was not possible to uh, play ultimate all day, and uh, I had to uh, get rid of my energy. So I started playing basketball, um, and I played basketball for 18 years, until I was 18. And on the year, on my, when I was 12, I, uh, I started combining um, frisbee with uh, basketball, but it was still more for fun than for real. 
And then uh, for me, uh, it all opened in uh, 2007 in Southampton, when it was the first time I could play against uh, kids from my own age, because before I always had to play uh, against grown-ups. And uh, Southampton really, really give, gave me the, yeah, the boost and the satisfaction to be the best player possible. And uh, from that moment, I really uh, invest more and more in, in Frisbee. And I became uh, way faster, a better player in playing Frisbee than basketball. So at the age of 18, I well, went full on uh, Frisbee. And uh, yeah, that also was a, like, a, a big pro progress for me when I was uh, only focused on the frisbee and I left the basketball beside. Um, so that's kind of my story. <laughs> so thank you for, for that. And in, in terms of, so well, it's a question we'll put to both of you, but in different ways, but you first, PJ. Um, so in terms of, you've obviously recovered from injuries over your, your course of your career, you've recovered from illness, but obviously when you return to the pitch, it's, you know, you are PJ, you are, the player that you know everyone all the coaches are thinking about the matchups for so from a mental perspective what's the most important thing for you when you return to play after any injuries yeah in global uh, after an injury i was um, in the past i was um, yeah just recovering and then going on to the field with a lot of confidence but now uh, with the illness and uh, the three years out of the game it's uh, much harder uh, I lost some confidence, but um, I still feel uh, that I have a lot of respect and confidence from my teammates. So they really, really helped me uh, getting back in the process. And uh, I'm very happy to be back. Uh, it's not at the same level, but uh, I will try to do my best for the team and for myself. And uh, yeah, mentally, it's getting better and better each day, uh, going out at the guys and uh, throughout the season. So it's, uh, I'm very thankful for, it, for them because they really uh, are a big support for me. And for you, Dan, on your mental side, you talked about having the hunger for the game. Um, what do you think makes you the most hungry? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think just to put up a show for everybody uh, with, with, with the guys here, um, to do big stuff, uh, to play nice ultimate, um, and yeah, just to grow every tournament, then and I hope one day we will, we will be world champion. That's maybe my dream. So or the Olympics, but you will see about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just one big tournament that just gives us all the respect uh, that we earned over the years, maybe. So yeah, that's it. Well, thank you all so much for your answers. Really appreciate your time and all the information you've given us. Um, we are going to play a little game now. So we'll be uh, doing a bit of Mr. and Mrs., but obviously Mr.'s and Mr.'s. Um, <laughs> so the format of that, we will ask you a question individually, so we're going to boot some of you out, and then we'll see if your teammates can get the right answers that you said. We'll be back.